morning. Good morning. Well, today is March the 19th, and it's the fourth Sunday of Lent. God bless you this morning. Um, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it's a blessing, just a blessing to join with you in prayer and praise of our Lord and Savior this morning. So, praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Amen. And again, I thank you for silencing your cell phones and mobile devices as a courtesy to one another. Um, as we, and thank you for acknowledging the time before service in silence um, as we welcome in the Holy Spirit. And normally I would acknowledge guests, but we're all family this morning, and that's a hallelujah. Uh, and we do have a few announcements. So, uh, Tuesday the 21st, uh, the Emmaus group will meet at 10 a.m. at Panera Bread. On Wednesday the 22nd at 7 o'clock, we will have our Linton study the last week. And... The United Methodist Men will meet for breakfast at the Orange Tree Cafe on Saturday the 25th at 11 o'clock in the morning. Okay, are there any other announcements at this time? Flower orders are still available in the bulletin. And flower orders are available in the bulletin. Is this the last one? No, there's one more week after. There's one more week after this to order your flowers for the Easter holiday. Okay. Please stand as you are able and join me in our responsive call to worship. When the world is dark and full of hate and fear, when we cannot see God, we will turn on the light. When we cannot find our way back to love and peace, we will turn on the light. When our vision dims due to the darkness within, we will turn on the light. Christ opens our eyes with the gift of sight. The light of the world is Jesus Christ. Come and worship the one who brings sight to the blind. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise God, God, the light of the world. world.
It is time for our joys and concerns and prayers of the people. I invite you to bow with me as I pray this morning. Lord, we thank you so much that you are an almighty, all-powerful God who hears our prayers and who heals and delivers and saves, saves our souls. We thank you, O Lord, that God is doing better, doing much, much better. And we thank you, O God, that Donna is doing absolutely fantastic. And Lord, we come with heavy hearts as we pray for the family of four-year-old Ali, whose life has gone so soon due to an accident. Father, we ask that you would be with Carol and God as they go through a difficult season in their lives. Strengthen them, hold them up, cause their eyes to focus on you from whom their help comes. And remind them, O oh Lord, that you will never leave them or forsake them. Father, we ask that you would be with us in our service today. In fact, in fact, we know that you are because you are ever present. You are with us. But we ask that you would touch us in this service today, that your, your mighty hand would reach out and grab us and give us a hug and touch our hearts and our minds. Still where there is, still our hearts, Lord, where there is this ease. Still, O oh God, where there is fear and lack of peace. And Lord, where we need you to, to guide us in our decisions, O oh Lord, we turn our lives over to you, knowing that, that you make the final decisions and that we have but to be obedient, to listen, and to stay close to you and know how you are leading us. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful, beautiful day. We thank you for the sun. And despite the cold, we thank you that tomorrow is finally the beginning of spring. And we ask you, O oh Lord, that you would cause the weather to be wonderfully warm. And that you would be with us in all of our endeavors in this life, O oh Lord. That you would be with us, walk with us, talk with us, lead us and guide us, show us your ways. And Father, we ask that you would be with our nation that you would be with every leader of this nation, regardless of their political affiliation, that you would grant everyone, Lord, to hear your voice and to lead accordingly. Father, we ask these and all other prayer requests in the mighty and matchless name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
come now to our time of tithes and offerings. God is the God of the peaks and the valleys, the God of good times and of bad. He walks with us through all our paths. And whether the path be joyful and pleasant and sunny on this particular day, or whether the path be gloomy and drear and sad, God is always there. And the same is true not just for us, but for our neighbors around the world and here in this little corner of the world called Sterling Heights, Michigan. But there are people in this world and around Sterling Heights who don't realize that God is walking with them. And they need us to go out to them and to show them the signs of God's care and concern. That is what the church is for, the mission to spread this news of God's love to everybody so that those of our neighbors who may be walking through the valley of the shadow of death right now will know that they are accompanied by a loving God who wants to shine light into their world. And to do that, the church does need financial resources. So we ask you to please be generous with your gifts.
Our scripture this morning comes to us from the book of Ephesians in the fifth chapter, reading from the New Revised Standard Version. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness. Rather, expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, 
For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake! Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please bow with me as I pray. Father, as I come before your throne of grace, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, my Lord and my Redeemer. I ask that every distraction would be moved out of the way, and that every heart would be attentive to your word. For we know, Lord, that your word does not return void. I ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our yeah. way out of darkness. On this fourth Sunday of Lent, we continue to commemorate the season during which we honor all that was wrapped into Jesus' journey along the Via Dolorosa. The way of grief. On the way to the cross on Calvary. We acknowledge the salvation that it affords us and the far-reaching meaning for us in terms of eternal life and freedom and power and the ability to live unfettered by fear and darkness. The Apostle Paul admonishes the Ephesians to live light, live as light rather than as darkness after directing them to renounce their pagan ways and be imitators of God, saying, live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. He admonished them not to be associated with or deceived by empty words because God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Paul further warned them to neither discuss the deeds of the wicked or be associated with them. Years ago, we used to quote the expression, association brings about assimilation. It means that you become like those that you keep company with. Thus, one should only relate and associate with persons who are headed in the same direction or have the same aspirations and standards. Otherwise, you may be pulled off track, pulled back into sinfulness, or even stabbed in the back by the very persons who should have your back. In other words, Paul warned them to stay away from the things that Christ died to deliver them from. And Paul's speech is relevant for us today. Amen? Amen. Paul justifies his warning to the Ephesians to avoid disobedient persons, saying, You are the, in the light of the Lord now not darkness as you once were. Translation, you have been transformed from creatures of darkness to creatures of light. And the message translation reads it this way, you groped your way through that murk once, but no longer. You're out in the open now. The bright light of Christ makes your way very plain. So no more stumbling around. Get on with it. And so Paul is saying, if you are children of light, then live like it. Walk the walk and talk the talk. In order to live as children of light, we are to undertake a lifestyle that produces fruit, that bears evidence of the light or the spirit shining upon our life. Paul goes on to explain that we find evidence of this light in doing what is good, what is right, and what is true. Good, right, and true. These three words are qualities of the fruit of the light or the fruit of the spirit. The 
Let's take each word. The word good or goodness. The Greek word for goodness in, in verse 9 is, bear with me, agathosune. It means intrinsic, deep-rooted goodness, especially as a, as a personal quality with stress on the kindly side of goodness. It is the quality that represents uprightness of heart and life. In other words, whenever we practice the quality of goodness, we are demonstrating one of the fruit of the Spirit, as Paul discussed in Galatians 5 and 22. The Holy Spirit produces nine fruits in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. The next evidence of life or the spirit is found in all that is right, the second word, in that quality of life trio. The Greek word for right is diaxulute. I'm going to say that again and I'm going to say it correctly this time. Diakios une. Diakios une. It means justice, justice or righteousness of which God alone is the source or author. But practically it is divine righteousness. And that third quality in that spiritual trio is the word true. True or truthfulness is divide, defined in the Greek concordance as Aletheia. Aletheia. And I, I met someone in seminary named Aletheia. And now I understand why her mom named her that. She was a person of truth. It means truth that is not merely truth as spoken, but also truth of idea and reality and sincerity. Truth in the moral sphere. Divine truth revealed to man straightforwardness. It is impossible to, to possess this quality without godliness. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Maybe too few people understand that, which explains the proliferation today of something called alternative facts. By some, an alternative truth by others. Both expressions are lies in God's eyes. You see, truth is entrenched in the eternal, all-powerful, and unchangeable God. Jesus prayed, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Truth is something that is more than that, and it is not just something we act out. It is something that acts upon us. We can't change the truth, but the truth can and does change us. It sanctifies us. It sets us apart from the lies woven into our sin nature. This is another season, or rather another reason that it behooves us to spend time with God. God is truth, and truth acts upon us to transform us. It is more than what we speak. It is more, it is what we do and who we are and when we are and where we are in Christ Jesus. So how do we encapsulate these three words for the fruit of the light into our character? The good, the right, and the true. How do we do that? Well, number one, we do our homework. We seek to seek to learn what delights the Lord. How do we figure out what delights the Lord? It is right here in God's word. Listen. Psalm 147, verses 10 and 11. His delight is not in the strength of horses, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. 
hoping in his steadfast love. Fearing the Lord, that is honoring and respecting the Lord and hoping in his steadfast love, knowing that your perfect love casts out sin and darkness and fear. Proverbs 11.1, 1, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. And then Jeremiah 9.21, but let him who boasts boast of this, that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness, judge, justice, and righteousness on earth. For I delight in these things, declares the Lord. Those are the things that the Lord delights in, and those are the things that we should carry out in our lives to ensure that we are the delight of the Lord. Take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Next, we make sure we have nothing to do with unfruitful works of darkness. We don't listen to it, we don't talk about it, and we certainly don't think about it. We bypass works of darkness, we go around them, we jump over them, and we flee from them if necessary. As was stated earlier, the Lord even forbids us to talk about acts of darkness because it exposes our hearts and our minds, our spirits to evil, and we don't need that. It is dangerous to entertain evil in our hearts and minds because we are vulnerable to being overtaken if we are not spiritually grounded. We do not engage with darkness in any form or fashion for any amount of time, for any reason whatsoever. You know, often we judge others about the, the things that they do that are dark in their lives, but sometimes if you think about it, when we judge others, it is after entertaining, entertaining thoughts of darkness about them, with or without evidence. Be careful to maintain thoughts that are grounded in light. The Lord is insistent about us refraining from refraining rather from evil, all aspects of evil. Don't do it, don't discuss it. We do not tempt wickedness. That is dangerous. We are called to expose acts of darkness, anything that is not goodness, righteousness, or truthfulness. We avoid behavior that does not imitate Christ, and we call out counterfeit behavior to awaken others so they do not fall into the same state of disobedience. That is part of our making of disciples. Their evil works that is, the works of the evil are so perverted that they are done in darkness. And when you were growing up, did your mom ever tell you nothing good happens after midnight? <laughs> ever knew that? Ah, darkness. The works are, are so vile that their mere mention is sin. For what must be done in the dark does not bear truth or righteousness or goodness. When our deeds can withstand exposure by light, then we know that their work becomes visible for all to see. The beauty lies in the fact that we do not have to walk in darkness, for Christ is our light. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That light need light. The light of Christ gives, the light that Christ gives is life-giving and life-transforming. It awoke us from the dead when we were through, when we through faith became imitators of Christ. And this is the judgment. I'm reading John 3, 19 through 21. This is the judgment. 
that the light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. So that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. For we used to be darkness, but now united in the Lord, we are light. So live like children of light, for the fruit of the light is in every kind of goodness, righteousness, and truth. Try to determine what will please the Lord. Have nothing to do with deeds produced by darkness, but instead expose them, for it is shameful even to speak of these things, these things that people do in secret, but in everything exposed to the light, but everything exposed to the light is revealed clearly for what it is. Anything revealed is a light. And that is why it says, get up sleeper, arise from the dead, and the Messiah will shine on you. We understand that God gave us light, and God did that in mercy and grace. There's a song that was out called Mercy Said No. And I'll read the lyrics. Mercy said no. I'm not going to let you go. God did not let us go to darkness. God gave his only son that we might have life, that we might have light, that we might have truth, that we might have righteousness. I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you slip away. You don't have to be afraid. Mercy said no. Sin will never take control. Life and death face to face. Darkness tried to steal my heart away. Thank you, Jesus. Mercy said no. We have been given and received a way out of darkness. Do not look back. Do not reflect back or go back into darkness. Live what is good, what is right, and what is true in the quality of a life lived in light. The quality of light that means light becomes transformed to light. The quality of life that we live becomes transformed to light. Our way out of darkness has already been paved. Amen. Amen. amen and amen.
remember mercy said no. When life and death stood face to face and darkness tried to steal our hearts away, we thank Jesus because mercy said no. Don't look back, don't reflect back, don't go back into darkness. Live what is good and right and true. And that is the quality of a life that is lived in light. Take that with you in the days to come. Amen. Amen.